Welcome to our team mini-series breakdown. Today we are breaking down the Cincinnati Bengals uh, with their new star quarterback from LSU, Joe Burrow. Uh, what we're going to do is we'll go over, just like we've done in other episodes, we'll go over the basically the starting lineup, we'll go over some depth players that might be alright to, to draft on your teams or for dynasties. Uh, we'll mention the backup quarterbacks. In some cases, some of these teams will may use them or... I mean, you might want to look out for them if the starter goes down. Uh, mention some IDPs if there's any that are worth it. Uh, team defenses as a whole. And that's basically it. So starting here with the Bengals, we got Joe Burrow, the rookie out of LSU. Um, I I projected out all my quarterbacks. Uh, I projected out all my players, actually. But as far as like the quarterbacks go, um, they were the first ones that I've done. So my stats are a little older on these. Uh, but I got him at about 3,700 yards passing his rookie year, 24 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Um, he has done some running in college and i could see him running again in the nfl uh 300 yards two touchdowns on about 110 attempts uh giving him about 42 fantasy points so uh overall for the season about 309 fantasy points uh, about 61.9 percent completion percentage so um a decent rookie year i mean not not i mean we've seen baker mayfield throw for 27 touchdowns in his in his rookie year we've seen uh cam newton come out and light it up his rookie year uh, especially those first couple games that he played so i think this is going to be especially and we'll talk about the defense in a little bit um but with the defense being not great really he's going to have a lot of opportunities to throw he's got a lot of weapons all around him so i can see joe burrow having a, a nice fantasy year for you guys yeah, I know, and we've talked about Joe Burrow a few times. Uh, I'm interested to see what he does in Zach Taylor's offense. I've mentioned before, but Jared Goff, who I think is much worse than Joe Burrow, had a 13th overall finish, 7th and 12th. So really a QB1 every year that he was under Sean McVay slash Zach Taylor offense. So Joe Burrow I don't think is going to be a QB1 in his first season just because naturally rookies are going to go through ups and downs throughout the course of the year. But based on those projections, you have him pretty similar to a Daniel Jones kind of rookie year last year. Mm -hmm. Daniel Jones only played 13 games, but same thing. He threw for 24 touchdowns. He had 12 interceptions and uh, a ton of fumbles, but uh, I, I think that's pretty reasonable for him. I have Joe Burrow as my QB 18 right now, so I think he's going to have weeks where he's a QB 1. You already mentioned that he has some great weapons, and we'll kind of jump into those, but those weapons are really going to help him out in his rookie season. Exactly. So jumping into those weapons, uh, starting the backfield, Gio Bernard and Joe Mixon. Uh, Joe Mixon, I think he's going to continue to have a great career and especially come in this year he's going to give joe burrow a lot of help here uh, last year he ran for 278 rushes for 1137 yards and five touchdowns to be honest i really don't see that changing too much i mean he might add another touchdown or two on the ground but the rushes um they really didn't add anything to the run game they did upgrade their offensive line though so i could see more holes being opened up i don't really see the volume being opened up more i just think that i mean 275 278 even getting up to 300 is, is reasonable staying around the 1050 to 1150 in yards five six touchdowns i mean all that is reasonable he had 35 catches for 287 yards and three touchdowns through the air um geo bernard is more of the pass catching back you don't really see a lot of pass catching from joe mixon being that the rookie quarterback is back there you might see it a little bit more this year but i don't expect those numbers to jump up too much uh, and i'll let you talk about the running backs a little bit more and especially geo bernard i don't want to keep on rambling about him yeah, I mean, so that entire offense kind of runs through the play action and high volume passes. So, uh, you know, Joe Mixon's going to get his opportunities, uh, you know, and I've mentioned before, the only thing I'm a little concerned with is he hovers right around 55 to 58 percent of snap percentage. So Giovanni Bernard is right around that 40 percent. He plays almost exclusively on third downs. And it's not really because Joe Mixon's a poor pass catcher. It's more he's a really poor pass blocker, and that's not really relevant for fantasy purposes, but it does keep him off the field more. So yep. that's one of those things that I think personally caps his upside a little bit in that off. Now, if he starts playing third down more, I mean, the floodgates are open and he could be a top five back. But to me, he's still in that six to ten range just because his volume is going to be there. You know, we've seen it before. He's very talented. That offensive line should be improved. But I think it's his upside is limited until he can 
be more involved in the passing game. Uh, Giovanni Bernard, yeah, I've always loved Giovanni Bernard. He's a great underrated pass-catching back, a really great real-life running back. He's had two, uh, two or three different seasons where he's had over a 1,000 scrimmage yards as well. So he's actually performed from a fantasy standpoint. And if Joe Mixon went down, I think he'd be a very serviceable uh, and, and with some upside uh, running back number two for fantasy purposes. I'm kind of interested. So there's been some rumors that he's a potential cap cut, Giovanni Bernard. I'm a little interested to see if anything like that does happen. They have some young backs there that have some up unproven upside, but they have Trayvon Williams, Rodney Anderson, who I really like coming out of Oklahoma. He's dealt with some injuries, but I'd be if Giovanni Bernard ended up getting cut, then Joe Mixon's ceiling is absolutely astronomical. So that's something to keep an eye out on, and I think he would skyrocket up boards if that was to happen. Yeah, and side note, if he does get cut, that's definitely that's a that's a name to monitor too for another team. Um, yeah. Moving on to the wide receivers, they realistically they can have depending on what kind of league you're in, they could have four to even five guys be drafted. You're looking at AJ Green. Tyler Boyd, John Ross being almost guaranteed drafted. If you're in dynasty leagues, guys like T. Higgins. And then I have marked on here Alex Erickson. Um, I don't really think that he's going to see the field as much as far as like offensive plays, but he is their kick and punt returner. So if you are in leagues where you get points for uh, punt and kick return yardage, and in most leagues you get points for touchdowns, um, if you have like a, a really deep rosters with um, – with a lot of flex spots or something like that, or, or it is something where you you get a lot of points for kick and punt return yardage. Alex Eric Alex Erickson is definitely worth it there. Um, but as far as on the offensive side of the ball, AJ Green, Tyler Boyd. We, obviously, AJ Green missed a lot of time last year. Missed the whole season last year. Tyler Boyd kind of came out last year. John Ross was uh, was solid at the beginning of the year until he got hurt and then they drafted t higgins with the first pick in the second round um so i don't know how much t higgins is really going to do in his rookie year especially with everybody in front of him but in a dynasty league definitely somebody that you got to draft he's been going in the second round in in rookie drafts um aj green if he plays a full 16 i can see him getting back to aj green of of, of before where he's getting targeted 150 times coming down with 75 85 balls over a thousand yards um and about eight nine touchdowns which is uh definitely that's i mean that's the age of green that we like that's the age of green that we know and he's going to be a joe burrow favorite target yeah and another name you didn't bring up and i'll bring him up i think he's an interesting dynasty stash is auden tate and he, uh, he actually performed better than most people realize last year. I mean, he's a big-bodied receiver. He's 6'5 or 6'6. Six, six. He had 575 yards. So, I, I mean, he's actually shown a little bit of ability. I actually streamed him in my flex in a few leagues last year, and he got me uh, 12 points a few weeks. So he's an interesting name if A.J. Green isn't there long-term. I think John Ross isn't going to get a contract from the Bengals. I'm not a big John Ross fan, so he's an interesting dynasty stash. I agree. I don't think T. Higgins is going to be overly relevant this season, but once again, he's another big-bodied guy, runs nice routes, has great hands. I think he, you could see him score a few touchdowns this year and be a red zone target, but not really a guy I'm going to target in redraft leagues. And uh, I love Tyler Boyd, you know, and I don't think a lot of people realized last season that he was seventh in the league in targets. And naturally, that's going to come down because AJ Green's healthy. John Ross struggled to stay healthy last season. So, but Tyler Boyd uh, is a really nice intermediate route runner, and Joe Burrow uh, threw a lot of those passes at LSU. So, I think I could see him and Boyd developing a nice connection. Currently, AJ Green's going off the board as the 21st wide receiver, Tyler Boyd, 32nd. So I really like the value of Tyler Boyd. And I agree. I think A.J. Green's going to put up solid numbers this season. And once he does, if you're in a dynasty league, he's a very high sell for me. Because long term, I've read a few medical reports, and A.J. Green should recover in the short term. They think, you know, another solid season in store for him. But beyond that, that injury can really linger on and it's known to shorten careers a bit so uh you know i don't expect the Bengals to sign them long term and it's really not a smart money move on their part so uh, aj green i expect them to put up numbers this year 
I like uh, I think him and Tyler Boyd are a nice one-two dynamic because I think they're two completely different wide receivers as well. With Boyd being a little more of a possession guy, so Tyler Boyd a lot of upside and value in PPR leagues. And AJ Green, I mean, he's one of the most talented receivers of this generation. So 21st, I think, is fair value for him considering the risk that he has with uh, getting re-injured. Yeah, and just keep in mind Tyler Boyd also did sign a big contract, so him and him and Joe yep. Burrow are going to be together for a few years. Uh, moving on to the tight ends, not really much, not really anything sexy here. CJ Zoma, Drew Sample, more flyers, more streamers. Um, nobody that I would really trust on an every week basis. Uh, Uzoma may be a little bit more than Sample. I think he's going to end up seeing more more time on the field. But it's it's an offense where we just named four or five different wide receivers plus the two running backs. So I don't know how much volume they're really going to get. Um, but if you're there's a couple weeks during the season that have six teams on bye week. So um, that might be one of those weeks where if you're looking for looking for a tight end streamer, you can grab them. Yeah, I mean, I'm not touching Drew Sample or CJ Who's Your Mama. Uh, that, that seems appropriate. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not touching either one of them. I actually wrote an article about this a few months ago. It's kind of a weird stereotype that young quarterbacks like to throw to their tight ends. But when I dove back in about of 10 years' worth of data... That's really not true. Uh, they don't target their tight ends more than their wide receivers, and very few tight ends are successful with a rookie quarterback. So uh, they're not high-end names and pair it with a rookie quarterback. I'm not seeing any value from them. I wouldn't target them in dynasty or redraft leagues. All right, perfect. Uh, a couple other things we wanted to go over. The backup quarterback seems to be Ryan Finley. Uh, if Joe Burrow goes down. I don't think I'm going to be touching Ryan Finley. Maybe in a two quarterback super flex league if you absolutely no. need one, but I'm not. I'm not putting my hands on him. Uh, Randy Bullock is their kicker. I know we wanted to mention kickers. He is. If, if they can move the ball, if this offense is what we think that it could be, if they can move it with Joe Mixon and all those wide receivers, I would trust Randy Bullock. Get him inside the 30, 35. Start hitting some 50, 45 yard field goals. That that's. I mean, it's definitely realistic if they can move the ball. If Joe Burrow is who we think that Joe Burrow can be, then Randy Bullock is a good kicker to pick up. Yeah, and he's not a kicker I'm necessarily drafting, but I kind of put my eye on him just to see how that offense performs and when it comes to kickers a lot of times for me you want to see how they do in the red zone and typically rookie quarterbacks struggle more than veterans in the red zone so I could see them getting halted and Randy Bullock having some value but I'd give it a few weeks to kind of let that offense sort itself out and then really take it from there. All right, and then defensively, um, in some of these episodes, you notice that we will go over some individual IDPs, and then we'll also talk about the the defensive special teams as a whole. Like I mentioned already, um, with uh, Alex Erickson, he is he's their kick and punt returner as far as special teams go, but on the defensive side of the ball, there's not really anybody that I would be going out to draft individually. Um, they do have, I mean, they have a lot of nice names and as a whole, you got Carlos Dunlap, Geno Atkins, um, but in IDP leagues, it's, it's, uh, linebackers that you want to focus on more and, and none of these guys really stand out to me as much as like other linebackers that are in the league and that we've talked about and that we will talk about. Um, and, and when it comes to the defensive backs, they, they definitely upgraded a lot. They got Trey Waynes out of Minnesota. Uh, they got Von Bell from New Orleans, but you don't. It's uh, unless they're getting a lot of tackles, you're really not getting a lot of points from your defensive back. So the linebackers, I'm not really trusting a lot as a whole, and the whole defense as a whole. Like I said, it, it's okay, but there's definitely about 12 to 16 defenses I would take over theirs that where I wouldn't even need to touch Cincinnati. Yeah, I mean, I think they're a really intriguing young defense. When you look at their defensive line, there's some interesting names. You already mentioned Carlos Dunlap and Geno Atkins. DJ Reader, who's a fantastic nose tackle. Uh, they also have Sam Hubbard, who is a guy I want to quickly bring up. But he's a younger guy that really broke through for him last year. He had eight and a half sacks. And uh, he really showed a great ability to 
get at the quarterback. So I wouldn't be surprised if you saw a 10 sack season from him. So he's a guy, if you have to draft a defensive lineman specifically, I think he's a sleeper there. Uh, Yeah, you already mentioned their linebacking core, a lot of youth there. You know, we'll see if any of them break through a guy to keep your eye out on, not to draft, but if you're in an IDP dynasty, I would, but uh, Logan Wilson was a guy they drafted this year. Uh, Right now he's listed as their backup middle linebacker, but I'd assume that he's going to start and he could realistically be their middle linebacker for the next 10 to 15 seasons so we'll see how that shakes out Uh, and then their safeties actually they arguably have the best safety duo for all IDP so uh, Jesse Bates and Sean Williams were both top 12 safeties last year and actually Jesse Bates was a top five and kind of under the radar both of them have had back-to-back 100 tackle seasons which is a ton for a safety so if you have to start a DB or a safety specifically then those are two guys you can target and really under the radar names you know you can draft them within the last few rounds because people don't know who they are but under the radar back-to-back 100 tackle seasons. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned Logan Logan Wilson. I don't want to keep on extending the show, but Logan Wilson, if you have a uh, if you're in a in a IDP dynasty league and you have a taxi spot, uh, he's definitely a guy to keep your keep your eyes on. All right, so with that, um, any final thoughts on the team as a whole? Or how do you see them finishing in the AFC North? Yeah, I mean, I think that they'll finish kind of most likely towards the bottom. I mean, that's an interesting division. I never count the Steelers out. On paper, I want to count the Steelers out, but Mike Tomlin is, to me, the second best coach in the entire NFL, so I uh, I never count Mike Tomlin out, especially when you see what they did last year. The Ravens should be at the top, and we don't know what to expect from the Browns, honestly. I mean, on paper, they're super talented, but I could see either the Browns or Bengals finishing in last, but I, I expect some progress from the Bengals. You know, you're looking probably at a 6-7 win season. Yeah, definitely an improvement from last year where they only had two, but it's still it's a tough division. It's a tough uh it's it's the weaker conference of the two, but it's it's not enough to where they're gonna make the playoffs, at least in twenty twenty. All right, so until the next episode, we'll see you guys again.